Okay, let's continue. <coughs> we finished at the beginning of the introduction of binary covalent bonding related compounds, which is defined as composed of the atoms from uh, two or more elements, right? And uh, with a shared bonding electron, not electron transferred between the electropositive elements on the left as metals to the electronegative elements on the right hand side, right, right quarter portion of the uh, periodic table as a non-metal to transfer electron to form a cation anion in the, uh, <coughs> okay, in the, in the case to, to form cation and anion. Normally not. Okay, so that's the case. So, uh, what's the rule of thumb of <coughs> naming those compounds? Right, naming those compounds. There's three rules, and since they're all, uh, most of them are non non metal, that can form ions by sharing the bonding electron in between the two nuclei, it's binary, right, and then uh, uh, form bond, share the electron. Could it be 100% if they are. Uh, identical, but in this case, because they come from two different elements, they are not identical. They are not identical elements to be able to shear the bonding electron 100% right in the middle. So they have slightly a little bit about a polarity when they form compound in the bonding between two elements. All right. So the nomenclature rules on binary covalent bonding uh, compounds have three rules. The first, we write the elements on the left. The first one, always use these elemental names, right? If it's nitrogen, nitrogen you go first. If it's oxygen, oxygen you go first, right? And then uh, the second elements, always use the name as naming them as a anion in monoatomic anion. The case we did in the binary ionic compounds, and then uh, because uh, the uh, difference between naming ionic and the covalent. So we adopt the prefix system, right? Mono, dial, trio, right? Tetra, right? Penta, and uh, hex, uh, hexo, and uh, uh, the uh, what's that? Hepta and uh, octa. Uh, so those as the prefix to use the indicated number of atoms of uh, individual elements involved in the compound formula. All right, so uh, that is the three rules, very simple. And then we have a couple, uh, well, half dozen uh, examples just on here. Then uh, the first one is N2O, and it is called a di because it's got two nitrogen, di nitrogen monoxide, and it has a common name of nitrous oxide, right? And then uh, NO, which is very popular about 10, 15 years ago, talk about this compound is a neurotransmitter in the uh, human body to deliver the signal from the brain to the nerve ending to operating your arms and muscles. But that is the one nitrogen, one oxygen compound with two elements, two atom, one each, right? One atom each and then give you a name called a nitrogen because there's only one we do not use mono and uh, in the naming the mono in the, in the naming for the first elements on the left. It's not a doubt a lot. And then, uh, but first one is a nitrogen. The second one, it does have to put a mono in there because only one oxygen instead of two. So you say monoxide. Then the common name is nitric oxide, right? Then this one, N2O5. All right, two nitrogen atoms and five oxygen atoms. It named as dinitrogen because two of them. And what? Penta oxide. Now penta is P E N T A. The A and the O, the both vowels and then meet each other and then get a confusion for pronunciation. So normally the A is dropped or omitted. So in this case, we, can, we, we say dinitrogen pentoxide. Right? The A is barely, you know, not there. But you, you, you should understand there's A down there. And then number four, P4O10, all right? The 10 oxygen is DECA. The same token, DECA, the A and O, meet each other two vowel, so we drop A, keep the O, so we call tetraphosphorus, there's four phosphorus atoms, and then 10 oxygen, so pen 
tetraphosphorus and the deck oxide. Deck oxide, right? Deck oxide. And the last one we uh, talk about sulfur and the fluorine. Yeah, sulfur and fluorine can form six single bond and then uh, around the sulfur, right? And uh, seems like uh, sulfur can produce six electron by what? Where's sulfur? Sulfur position right here, right? Position was that? 18, 17, 16, right? 16. And then it can lose six electron, become neon, up, neon configuration. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. All, five, all six electron lost. To what? To fluorine. Fluorine gain one, right? Each fluorine gain one become neon. So they both sulfur and the, and the fluorine become neon electron configuration. It's just which is a noble gas configuration is more stable because it's inert, chemically inreactive. That's how sulfur hexafluoride is the compound name, and the hex means six. So there's a single bond, six of them around it. It's a, it's in, uh, the bonding is around X, Y, Z, 3, D, Cartesian system around the axis. One's the positive X, one's the negative X, one's the positive Z, negative Z, one's positive Y, and negative Y. So they stick out like a form a optic strong, uh, uh, octahedron shape molecule, right? And uh, uh, it's more stable. All right, that's the uh, compound. Now these are the uh, compound with all these non-metals, right? Non-metals involve prefix and then how to name them, right? Okay, now uh, by now we finished all the categories of the compound except one final category. What is the category? That category is kind of big and it's important in chemistry. And we did not have that. We just reclassified them into a separate category. So we'll call more attention to, to them as a new type of compound in one class. What is that? That is called acid and bases. Now everybody uh, know these two terms, acid base. Now the common uh, species can be classified into acid base, and vinegar, and the baking soda, right? So you knew, you know those, uh, you knew this all along, you knew that. And then the, the kitchen stuffs. And, but we are not talking about kitchen stuff here. In chemistry, we're learning something more serious than just you know, with a uh, housewife in the kitchen, right? So uh, what is the definition of acid base, right? At the very beginning, in the 1880s, right, there was a guy in Sweden, and his name is, uh, I think his last name is uh, Aronis, right, and uh, he was still studying for his doctor degree, and then he uh, kind of uh, through deep thinking and found out in the solution something can happen if the compound dissolve and dissociate into the solution, and then these two process, once dissolved. One's dissociation. These two are two different steps. Put solute in aqueous based, water based solution, it will happen to the chemicals. Chemical, some of the chemicals tend to split completely 100%, become cation and anion pairs, right? And uh, one of them is tend to, one of those categories, those lots of compounds, they were able to. Dissociate and act this dissolvation, dissociation, they are able to provide lots of protons, which is the hydrogen atoms lost one electron become positive charge cation, right? I already mentioned that in the last part, this is part 10. Now, part 9, we mentioned that uh, ammonia, right? Ammonia, right? Uh, uh, attached to one proton, right? And it become ammonium, or the water molecule attached to one proton because uh, both. Compounds, right? The uh, NH3 ammonia and water H2O both are slightly polar molecule. They have one end is slightly positive, right? Charged. The other end is negative charge. So they both have this kind of feature. Is able to attract the opposite charge from a proton, a naked proton, after hydrogen atom lost its own electron, right? Become positive charge, cation, and then they become a, a polyatomic. Cluster of a uh, cation, we one is called ammonia, add one proton become ammonium, right? 
the water atom and proton become a hydronium. These two are very important cations and the most polyatomic cations and uh, uh, in chemistry, right, in the solution. Now here we talk about the acid. Now iron is discovered. One type of chemical is able to dissolve and dissociate into the solution almost 100%. Produce a lot of proton, in this case, at that time, 1800, 1880, we did not even know there was a species we call hydronium. We consider as a proton, lose one electron from the hydrogen atom. Neutral atom, lose, neutral atom lose one electron, become a proton, a naked proton, right? And the hydrogen, positive charge hydrogen at cation, but actually it's combined with the water. Now, at that time, we did not know that. So we consider proton, right? And this kind of species is able to dissolve and dissociate the solution, produce a lot of proton, which is H plus, H plus one, or H one plus charge cation, those species he defined as acid. And to the contrary, another group of chemicals dissolve and dissociate in the water were able to produce a lot of uh, anion in the form of OH, one minus, we call hydroxide. So he defined those species or chemical compound able to produce a lot of hydroxide anion in the solution aqua solution most of the case, we'll consider as a basis. So the base, so by the iron yes definition, right? Acids the uh, substances able to dissociate in aqua solution to produce a lot of lot of what? Hydrogen cation cations as H in AQ as aqua solution. We already mentioned the physical state. Aqua is very, very important. One of the most important physical states in chemistry, right? Not plasma. The plasma is not on Earth naturally. And there was one plus charge cation, right? Well, actually. in the form of hydronium. What is hydronium? H3O1 plus. And it is AQ. AQ. Alright, that's the definition for acid. Now what is the base? The base. Basis. All right, alkaline is the category of substances right, able to dissolve and dissociate right, into aqua solution or in aqua solution. In this case, we, we, we haven't talked about, we, we mentioned that it's called electrolytes, right? In, in aqua solution, which have cation anion running around carrying the charge, right? It's a strong electrolytes move around and then they carry the current, right? Aqua solution, right? Aqua solution, aqua solution, aqua solution, aqua solution then, uh, to produce a lot of, lots of what? Lots of uh, hydroxide anion. Now, what is hydroxide anion? O H A Q, right? Minus one minus, right? All right, All right. And then uh, that is the definition for the base. 
So uh, if we understand these definitions, so what is the uh, examples, right? Let's give you the examples. <clears throat> Okay, examples, right? Examples for acid, acids, acids, right? All right, in the aqua solution. Now, there's one acid is very common. It's the strongest out of three common chemical lab uh, reagents we call strong acids, right? Strong acids. One is hydro, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now HCl, right? It is uh, uh, actually is a is a gas, right? It's a gas, and dissolving water, liquid, right? Then give us what? Give us uh, H3O1 plus. Now remember, I mentioned here H3O is hydronium, hydronium, and the actually is a H add on to H2O, so become H3O. Right? When H is one plus charge because the loss is electron, so this is a positive charge, hydronium representing H, representing uh, hydrogen cation, right here, representing this. this act. So, and another one is going to be the Cl, right? Cl and the aqueous, and the one minus. Now that is the uh, situation. You have a, a hydrogen gas, chlorine gas, right? One is pale green, one is colorless, I think. And then uh, hydrogen colorless, chlorine gas, uh, pale green, very pale green. It, it just, it's a chemical weapon, all right? Chlorine gas chemical weapon during World War I. Now who's the one uh, uh, discovered this uh, gas can kill? And uh, he is so famous, and uh, he is so famous of what? He, he was the mentor of the greatest scientist ever lived on Earth, the surface, surface of Earth. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. Einstein, all right? And this guy who discovered and the promote, uh, proposed to use chlorine gas as a weaponry in the World War II, oh uh, no, World War I, killed millions, hundreds of thousands of uh, soldiers uh, on both sides. His name is Haber, H-A-B-E-R. Haber is a scientist, a chemist, and uh, he discovered the process to produce ammonia, right, gas, to uh, make a fertilizer, to sustain the world population. People won't go hungry because we can produce more fertilizer, right? Fertilizer produce more grain, more food. But the same person proposed to use the chlorine gas as a weapon in World War I, kills hundreds of soldiers in the battlefields, and the same person, and uh, uh, now we know the chlorine gas also is at this very moment for the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, crisis, we use a bleach. The bleach produces chlorine gas, which is the killer for the virus. So I am personally use bleach every day, clean the outside wrappers of the shipping uh, coming to my house, and I come home with my shoes soaked into the bleach solutions and about three cup, uh, one third cup of one half cup of uh, no, that's a one third one half cup of uh, bleach in one gallon of water and soak in, then wipe off. So kill the germ on the ground and maybe something you know somewhere spit on it, right? And uh, clean my hand and gloves, everything. So. That is the chlorine gas, the pale green gas. If they meet, the hydrogen gas and chlorine gas meet, become a gas phase, uh, hydrochloride gas, right? The gas. And then that is easy to be pumped into the water, make a solution with a high concentration of uh, HCl, which is uh, uh, the acid, right? Now, what happened in the solution, if we are able to go in there, of course, we cannot go in there and see it. But we can close our eyes, right? Close our, our, our eyes and then imagine. That's what I will say. Close your eyes and imagine. Try to imagine the situation invisible. So imagine the HCl goes to water. The water is there, right? Water is there. And this water combined with one proton from the compound, right? HCl, gas phase, and then become a hydronium, one plus charge, cation, 
which representing the hydrogen uh, hydrogen cation, right? And by the definition, so this become a solution with this uh, cation and anion paired, it become very very corrosive, strong acid ever in the lab, and then uh, every lab should have one bottle of this to do chemical experiment. Otherwise, that's not called chemical a chemical uh, lab. So this is the situation for uh, fitting to the definition of acid, right? There's more, right? There's more. And nitric acid, we already have it. We already, we erase right here, nitric acid, right? Nitric acid, nitric acid HNO3. That's the second out of the three strong acids in a chemical lab, right? That is uh, supposed to be aqueous. Aqueous means already dissolved, dissolved in water. So we can still add water in there because there's a lot of water in this in aqueous. You know, it could be a uh, uh, liquid, all right? It uh, could be stuck. Let's let's change this to liquid, okay? Let's change to very concentrated nitric acid. Is is going to be in liquid, right? But add into the solvent water and then. Uh, become uh, again hydronium one plus and aqueous and the, the other is going to be what? the nitrate the nitrate anion and the floating around in the water in this aqueous physical state that is also this kind of chemical we call strong electrolytes it is they are able to dissolve in water then immediately after dissolvation, they become dissociated into cation and anion pair, which one of the cation just happened to be a proton-based cation, fitting into definition considered as acid. Is that clear? All right. There's a difference. Is a dif there, there's a difference. So, so, so the, let, let me let me see. This this is acid, right? That's acid. That's acid. Right, hydrochloric acid is nitric acid. But if I give you this compound, right? Let's say silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is solid. It's a salt, and it's neutral. It's a and then you dissolve in water, right? Right, dissolve in water. So the physical state from solid change into aqueous. So what happened is this is a ionic. Polyatomic compound, right? One, two, three, three elements, right? What's different number of uh, atoms? When it dissolves, this is not acid. This is because it, it does not form. Look, this is what happened is the silver, silver we said, silver has one plus, a uh, plus one oxidation state only, right? Only plus one. Time, 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 time. Okay, good. Seven minutes. And there is, silver is dissolved in ionic status into the aqueous solution and showing a 1 plus charge cation but that is not H, it's AG <laughs> so that's not uh, hydronium so it's not representing acid but the other one is the nitrate same thing as the top, nitric acid 1 minus so is this acid? No, it is not because when this dissolving water dissociates into cation and ion pair, there's no hydronium or hydrogen cation appear to be separated to to do some uh, work as acid. So it's not. It's a it's a it's a neutral compound. A shorthand compound. All right. Now that's example. So you are able to distinguish. Now the third one, right? Third one. The third one is a another strong acid, one of the three, sulfuric acid. All right, sulfuric acid is a very sticky, yellowish, and uh, all right, and uh, nasty, nasty solution, uh, nasty uh, liquid, and then uh, it has contained two hydrogen atoms inside its formula, but this is still strong acid. All right, it's very strong acid. Even though it cannot be in water by itself, dissolving water, H2O, right? right? It cannot be completely 100% dissociated for both hydrogen atoms in the, in the molecule, right? In, in, in the formula, but it goes by one at a time. So the first one come out, form hydronium, right? And then remaining will be one still remain attached to the sulfate. It's called a hydrogen sulfate. So H 
SO4. Since you got one hydrogen dislodged, separated. So this one is a plus one, this one got to be one minus one because they pair go back to this still neutral. So this is one minus, it's aqueous. Now this is hundred percent dissociation, right? Dissociation. This hundred percent dissociation. Right? This first. But second one, when you have the hydrogen, right? Hydrogen sulfate, one minus, it's aqueous, right? It's not liquid anymore, it's aqueous. This one still saving water, right? The same water, same solution. So you have lots of water around, so many water molecules, it is able to dissociate got the dissolvation power from this polar molecule. Dissociate this one also can separate again for the second hydrogen, second proton, dislodge or dissociate dissociate it from the hydrogen sulfate, become a hydronium aqueous, and the sulfate two minus aqueous because there's no, no hydrogen. This hydrogen right here is going to combine with water to become a hydronium and the sulfate two minus anion will stick up. But this is not 100%. It's a Ka which is about 10 to the minus 2. All right, 10 to the minus 2. Each mole of uh, uh, hydrogen sulfate solution you can have 0 0.01 moles which is 10 to minus 2 uh, moles of uh, uh, the formula being dissolved in the rest of the state. But under reaction condition, only but, let's put here, but under reaction condition, for instance, acid base reaction, it goes 100%. Dissociation. All right. This complete. So this is this is not the case. Ten to minus two is not the case. All right. Ten to minus one. So these three. This one, and this one, and this one. These three are the strongest, most important, strongest compound acid in the chemical lab. Every chemist should know. If somebody don't know this, this person should not call himself a chemist. He or she should have some problem, right? So let's put this way. All right, that's acid. All right, example for base. Now I'm going to give you generalized. So this compound continue, right? We, we times almost a two, one, two. So what a base? The base, right? The base. Now one of the example itself doesn't seem to have an OH, which is hydroxide, but it does. A, it does have the capability to to dissociate water through a process called hydrolysis to split water H2O into H plus OH so if that happens that species we still consider as base because it's fitting to the definition for base is able to produce what? produce OH the OH can be just from the species substance, substances by itself or from somewhere else, react with it in the solution. So in this case, the solvent play the role to provide OH, but not by itself can split, but by something else. So example, say here, is the uh, ammonia. Ammonia gas, right? NH3, we've been doing this for so many times. And then if you bubble the ammonia gas into the water, and then you, you, you make the ammonia solution, which is the pine saw, right? Pine saw. Uh, you clean your kitchen and bathroom with. So what happens? This one goes in. This one is a polar. Got two electrons on this side, the other, the other five electrons, right? Number five, that's right here. Five A, right? But five electron. The S electron can be. And these electrons can be bonded to three hydrogen and the left two. The two one end is the two more electron, non-bonding electron, show a negative, net, slightly negative end. So it's able to react with the polar molecule water to form what? NH4. We already talked about aqueous solution, right? That's called what? Ammonium, right? Ammonium, which is one plus charge and plus what? OH, one minus charge. Aqueous. That's the base. The OH minus one is the base. Now time's up, and we continue from this is going to be part eleven, compound number.
Jesus.